Yeah, um, yeah, he said it was raining outside, but let's let's pray that it will rain in here. Amen. Eh? That God will rain in here in his power and his glory. Because uh, I don't want nothing left. I'm 71 this year. Mm. And I, I want I want something more in God. I want something to happen that's even greater than we've ever seen or imagined, you know. And uh, I put something together. It's a bit like making a cake mix. You don't know how it's going to turn out sometimes. <laughs> Have you ever done that? <laughs> so you've got all the ingredients in the right order. And because I haven't spoke for a long, long time, it's uh, yeah, a bit different. Anyway, so I'm hoping God's going to put the icing on the cake this morning. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just looking at Acts, the Apostles. Acts 8, uh, 1 to 4. So it goes in keeping with what Jason was saying about Pentecost, I think. Um, Saul, there was a, a great move of God, but Saul tried to stamp it out. Saul was one of the witnesses uh, when Stephen got killed, as we know. He, he agreed to it completely with killing Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all believers except the apostles were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging both men and women to throw them into prison. Uh, but the believers were scattered throughout uh, and preached the gospel about Jesus everywhere they went. So, there we have it. He, he, Paul was a really strong character. Definitely wanted to stamp out Christianity, you know. And um, people moved. They moved to different places. Like I'm moving now. <laughs> They moved to different places, they, they, they went to different neighbourhoods, different towns, and lived in different places. It wasn't just hundreds, I believe, it was thousands of them, because there was a lot of people that got converted during the time of Jesus. Well, it's 5,000 he fed for a start, you know, but perhaps not all of them came to the Lord. But there was a multitude of people that left through fear of their lives and for their family. And even Paul went on the road to Damascus to get the ones that escaped running after them. What a zealous man. And uh, so it's interesting really that this happened and they, they weren't all evangelists, the people that preached the gospel everywhere, they're just people like you and me. That's quite an eye opener, isn't it? Everywhere the people, the Christians of that, of Jerusalem went, they preached the gospel. They probably it was ignited by fear as well that they're going to get done, you know, if they get caught and they, they run away from the town and they explain themselves when they get into a new town, a new neighbourhood to live. I, I, I guess every one of their neighbours would have heard about the gospel message, the good news by that time, you know, the time they moved there. So it's quite exciting how it all happened. But God, is, God is in the detail, you know. Forget about the other fellow. God is in detail. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they weren't evangelists. I dare say, there was one guy that they talk about, Philip, who met someone on a <coughs> chariot, you know, I think it was. He was an evangelist, but all these other people weren't. But I dare say, you know, when we're in the process of <coughs> moving out in our faith, whatever faith we've got, <coughs> With those people, I dare say some of them became evangelists mm. because right. they got used to and supported by one another on doing what they're all doing. Mm. I bet it's quite exciting in a lot of ways, mm. you know, because they're all doing, they're all on the same common ground. Oh, Fred, how did you get on over there in your village? Oh, yeah, this happened. What's happening in yours? Yeah. You can imagine the atmosphere and the excitement. Yeah, so. So, so the Christians moved to different towns, lived in different neighbours. Undoubtedly there was neighbours who would have heard the good news. Um, just there's a verse in John 4, 35, you know the saying, 
Jesus says, four months between planting the harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. What did you think Jesus meant by saying, wake up, look around? The fields are already right up to harvest. What do you think? Anybody? You can talk. Oh, can you? Are we allowed to talk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not really the same. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, I was trying to get you into the groove a bit, you know. But, you know. Uh, what did Jesus mean by saying, wake, look around? The fields are already ripe and ready up to harvest. Hanging around with Jesus were hundreds and thousands of people with their eyes wide open and their mouths wide open. In amazement, the fields were white and ready on times. They were all there in front of him, all beaming and wanting to hear the next word that's coming out of his mouth. They were ready, you know, for the harvest. And that's quite an exciting uh, picture. Just shown that they were so keen Amen. on hearing the good news. It is good news because yeah. Jesus, God, forgives us. If we confess our sin, he cleanses them from them. I've been there, we've all been there. It's a continued process anyway. But mm -hmm. if we confess our sin, he will forgive us and cleanse us. And also, he said, whoever believes in me will have eternal life. So it is a, it's a big thing, that news. That was good news. Life after death, life forevermore. Yeah. In heaven, not in this particular state we're in now. But um, you know what? Lockdown made me realise the importance of our neighbours. I like to think we're, it says we're seated in heavenly places. But I like to think we're Christians that are down to earth Christians, heavenly down to earth Christians. You get that? Heavenly down to earth. So that what we've got in heavenly places, we've got it working out in our daily lives yeah. so that people can see it. That is so important, you know, that we're down to earth with our Christianity. Why? Because people need to see it. We needed to see it. And other people need to see it. We radiate Jesus, you know. Um, so that's just a little phrase. I get, you get these little phrases sometimes, don't you? All the time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially if you're with someone else who gets phrases as well. <laughs> you see them sort of bounce off one another, which is nice. No, it should be. It's lovely, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, lockdown made me realise the importance of our neighbours, those nearby. Where is the harvest field? It's the world around us, isn't it? More importantly, it's right outside our front door. Mm. Our harvest field is right out. Don't go any further. It's outside the front door, you know. Our neighbour, we walk through it every day, the harvest field, we walk through it every day. Each one of us has and sees different neighbours. We don't all see the same neighbours. You'd probably say thankfully if you knew where I lived. <laughs> but no, love overcomes all that. We're getting to love people. And uh, each one of us has different neighbours. Um, or people we have some sort of contact with. I mean, some people live far away. I, I live in the cul-de-sac, so I can't avoid anyone. <laughs> They're in front of me, beside us, everywhere. But it's good. It's good getting to know your neighbours and, 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 and sharing with them. and Just in a general sense, really. Just being nice with people and seeing what they're interested in. And just creating that, that, just that nice sort of relationship with people. You know, it's lovely. So... And you just build, that would only, you can only build more on that, I think, you know. Um, so, that's where harvest field is. Sometimes people get visions to do this, do that. I know about that sort of stuff. But more importantly, the neighbourhood is, is more, we're more directly in contact with our neighbours. I think it was about two months ago when I felt very strong about this. And I think Debbie said something about it, her neighbours to that effect, you know. But I had the same experience as well. So, we're on the same page. <laughs> uh, it's good to be on the same page. I've got a friend, you know. 99% of the time we're on the same page. I'm not going to tell you who he is. But it's lovely when we like that, where you can explain things to one another and you really understand one another from the heart. And you're on the same page. And I just want God's people to be on the same page. Yes. You 
know what I mean? With one another, with God, with one another and what we're sharing. I mean, a real in-the-heart job, you know. Mm. So, yeah. so um, as well as preaching the Word of God, you know, talking about neighbours, as well as preaching the Word of God, I've been considering the practical side of Christianity too, the practical side. This is where it all really happens, actually. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. You know, I was reading that, and I was considering that. That requires some practical applications. Mm. You know, loving your neighbour. How do you do that? And, you know. Um, you can tell us in Wednesday. Yeah, well, well I, I, I dare say other people may have <laughs> other angles. There's lots of different angles to each one of us. We're all different facets of the body of Christ. And we all contribute to the same thing, but we all have different angles. And it's nice to hear them, because yeah. we, we learn from one another. And that's what fellowship is, I think, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Love your neighbours as you love yourself. Just looking at love. Love is patient. You'll be very patient with me. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to finish this before the time, but... Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. Well, I've got some things to learn still. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Whenever the truth wins out, it rejoices. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. Ooh. Thank you Lord. Need more of that. Amen. Love is patient and kind. Well, kind. Oh, you can't speak, can you? What a shame. I was going to ask you what is kind. Save it for Wednesday. <laughs> Love is patient and kind. What is kind? I'll answer it for you. Kind as a practical application. As Christians, I want to come into the practical side of our Christianity. I'm a, I'm a one for preaching the word, or hopefully preaching the word more like it. <laughs> I don't mean in here, I mean with people, you know, there's different ways of communicating God's word. We're all different, and we have different people that we meet with. But um, I'm all for that, but more and more I'm coming to realise that being kind, there's no practical application to it, and that is the way forward for me because kindness opens people's hearts you know and opens their lives and I want to be like that I'm yeah. not saying I made it or anything like that at all but I do desire to be like that it has a practical application of being kind can be seen as maybe listening to someone being practical by helping them to do something your neighbours you know or showing an interest in what they're doing. You know, people need to feel wanted, need to feel part of something. And, or ask if they need uh, a hand doing a certain thing you may be able to do that they can't do. And it's just lovely when we can do those things with our neighbours. And uh, I don't, I'm not talking about it's all good works, it's faith and good works. Faith without works is dead, but works without faith is dead as well. So it's the, it's the spiritual side, faith, and it's the practical side, uh, which is faith, you know, doing things. Um, yeah. So it's, it's sort of getting alongside your neighbours and being a comfort to them, showing love, kindness, and touching on where they're at and how you can sort of help or be an encouragement to them to start with. Uh, it says in John 13, 35, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. This next little story says it all for you. Uh, it says it all for me. It's, it's still penetrating into my heart. Is that it's called a genuine interest. So, there were two friends, they were talking, and one of them shared that she really liked this sister in the Lord, 
Why? Why do you like her so much? Because she was genuinely interested in me. Uh, she was genuinely interested in me. She wasn't just passing the time of day or flitting around. She wanted to know about what was going on. She was genuinely interested in me. And that took... And that she took time to listen to me. So that, I tell you what, that's converting my life a bit more. That be, to be genuinely interested in people is a big thing for them because people know, even people who are not born again know when you're not, you know, not interested and you're passing the time of day, you know. And they need us, the church, to be genuinely interested in them as individuals, you know. After all, God is genuinely interested in us. Mm. So it goes to show, doesn't it? So this made me think, yes, we do need to show genuine interest in the people we meet. Our lives carry an expression of the love of God that's been developed in our hearts over the years, doesn't it? God teaching us, showing us different ways how to do things. It's the love of God in our hearts that people we'll see, especially if we operate in these ways, you know, uh, yeah, I'm realising more and more there's a practical side and a spiritual side to being a Christian. So, you know, sometimes I, I just used to think, preach the word, that was it, word, 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 <laughs> which is good, very good, but there's the practical side, you know that people need to see the love, it is a, there's a practical, got to be a practical application there. From here it all starts in what I call common ground, higher ground. Years ago I, I, re, I made an assessment course which I used to run in the network, not the network, it was a station, yeah. I'm getting mixed up with the hub and the network and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, which uh, help people develop their potential to dig out all the areas of potential and uh, I guess I've got this thing, common ground, higher ground, from that because I'm, when I meet people I tend to ask, not f in a formal way, I just play it by ear, you know, what do you do for a living? Oh, I did this and do that and it, somehow it gives you a bit of history about the person and it helps you to sort of understand them why this, that and the other, and you've got something you could perhaps put some input into. So I tend to think of sharing the gospel in this way, common ground, higher ground. It's great when you can find common ground with someone. Doesn't it infuse you? I mean, Fred's probably into football, but it's not. So, sorry, mate. <laughs> we won't get infused. <laughs> but if you get someone with someone else who's in the same team, <laughs> But that's, it's, good, it's good when you find common ground with someone because you go places, you take off. Don't you? Uh, and also the lovely thing about it, this is another story really that I've got on the go, in the body of Christ, if you find a common place with someone else in the body that's doing the same, similar things, it's so beautiful because you're sort of bonded. And also you're contributing to one another, maybe from a slightly different angle, but the same thing. And it just infuses you into doing more. So, common ground, higher ground. So hopefully, you know, when you can find common ground with someone, and you have a, a bit of a common understanding, I find people, so I find it easier to relate to you then, when you have common ground, you know. And sometimes, because of it, it can lead to higher ground. Well, I found just by showing some love to one or two, or, and, and they begin to trust you, then they actually want to confide in you more, and they want to know about Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is so beautiful, and that's what I, I love to see happening, you know, that there is that tangible love, that genuine interest in people, and developing us, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can be helpful, rather than just getting it done and out of the way, so, you know. <laughs> As we do sometimes, as I do sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So praise the Lord. So that, that's um, 
that's it really. Um, yeah, so come on ground high, man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap for that, will we? You know, I was just thinking of that verse that we've been speaking about, about the common good, that we're called to, the gifts are there for the common good. And common ground will bring you into higher ground. Isn't that what Terry was saying this morning? And we've all got common ground, don't we? So let our common ground bring us into higher ground. Let our common ground bring us into a higher place with each other and a higher place with God. I like that. Common ground will bring us into higher ground. Common good will bring us into the goodness of God. There must be more than this Oh, breath of God, come breathe within There must be more than this Spirit of God